Hello, welcome to part two of the demo video series on data protection for PowerStore storage arrays with Data Manager. In this demo, we will create a protection policy for backing up the block volume assets. We'll also perform an on-demand backup and snapshot for the block volume assets added to the protection policies. From the Data Manager UI, we'll start by navigating to Protection and Protection Policies, and then click Add. For this demo, we'll create two protection policies. First, we'll create a protection policy to perform both a snapshot and a backup from the primary array. Enter the name of the policy. Here, we'll call it Protection Primary Array and choose the type as Block Volumes. Select the purpose as Crash Consistent. Here, we'll add the standalone volume and the volume group, which are available only on the primary array. Specifically, these are called TME Demo Volume Primary and TME Demo Volume Group Primary. We can now configure the primary backup stage and snapshot stage for this policy. Under Primary Backup, click Add and click Add Backup to enter the schedule and retention details. In the Backup Via section, we can see that the backup will be performed through the primary array, which is enabled. The Remote Replica Array is grayed out because the assets added to this policy do not have that replica session configured. The assets added are standalone and are only present on the primary array. The recommended minimum backup interval is at least six hours. Enter the retention details and click Save. Now we'll add the snapshot stage to the same policy. Under Snapshot, click Add. In the Snapshot Location section, we see that only Primary Array is enabled. Enter the Schedule and Retention details. The recommended minimum snapshot interval is at least 15 minutes. Here we'll enter one hour. Click Save and click Next. Review the summary and click Finish. We can monitor the policy configuration from the System Jobs page. The policy configuration jobs are in progress. And now the policy configuration jobs are successful. We can drill down into the details on the Step Log tab. Let's check the configuration from the PowerStore Manager as well including the remote systems and remote backup session for each asset. Navigate to Protection and select Remote Systems. We see a remote system created along with the policy name. And in the remote backup, we see the backup sessions created for the assets. Similarly, we'll now create one more protection policy to perform backup of assets on the primary array through the replica array. We'll click Add and name the policy Protection Replica Array. We'll select the volume and volume group assets on the primary array that has the replica configuration. We can use the filter Assets with Replica to show only the assets which have replica policy assigned. Here we'll add the volume TME Demo Volume Replica and volume group TME Demo Volume Group Replica to this policy to perform backup through the replica array. Now we can see that the option to back up through the replica array is enabled because the assets on the primary array have the PowerStore replica policy assigned. And also at the snapshot stage, we can see that the snapshot location is enabled for both the primary array and the remote replica array. The policy configuration is successful. From the PowerStore Manager of the Replica Array, navigate to Protection and click on Remote Systems. We see the remote system is created. 
and the backup sessions are created during the protection policy configuration. Now that we have completed the policy configurations, let's go on to perform an on-demand backup to PowerProtect DD and a local snapshot operation for the assets added to these protection policies. To perform an on-demand backup, select the primary array policy and click Protect Now. Select all assets, then choose the configuration called Backup Now. Select the backup type enter the retention details, and click Next. Review the summary details and click Protect Now. We can monitor the progress of the backup job from the Protection Jobs section. The backup job is now successful, and we can examine the details and the step log. To perform an on-demand snapshot, select the Primary Array Policy and click Protect Now. Select the assets and choose the configuration called Take Snapshot. Enter the retention details and click Protect Now. We can monitor the snapshot jobs progress from the Protection Jobs page. The snapshot job is now successful and we can examine the details and the step log. Similarly, we'll now perform an on-demand backup and snapshot for the replica policy as well. Select the policy and click Protect Now. Select the assets and choose the configuration called Backup Now. Select the backup type, enter the retention details, and click Protect Now. Just as before, we can then monitor the backup job's progress from the Protection Jobs section. The backup job is now successful, and we can examine the details and step log. To perform an on-demand snapshot, select the Replica Array Policy and click Protect Now. Select the assets and choose the configuration called Take Snapshot. Enter the retention details and click Protect Now, and we can now monitor the snapshot job's progress. The snapshot job is now successful, and here are the details and step log. Let's verify the protection copies from Data Manager UI. Navigate to Restore, then Assets. Select the asset, then click View Copies. Here we see a successful backup and a snapshot copy available for Restore. Let's examine the other protection copy in the same way. In our next video, Part 3, we'll see how to perform centralized restore of block volume data using Data Manager. For more details about what we've covered here, see the technical white paper. Thanks for watching.